Sairam, everybody. Om Sairam. My heartfelt gratitude to Bhagwan Baba for having made this trip a reality, which is long been awaited. But better late than never. It has been realized at least now. All through my trip, I have been noticing the heights of devotion in South Africa, heights of devotion, their commitment to Swami, the spirit of service are really amazing, amazing. And I am to conclude that Swami has special love and will continue to shower his blessings on each and every one of you in the years to come. May Baba bless you, may Baba bless you. I was also told that all together perform functions, observe celebrations, Hindu Samaj, Arya Samaj, Krishna Consciousness, all join together and celebrate the functions. This is unique and very special. Port Elizabeth, South Africa. We thank Swami for having made it possible, which is not happening anywhere. I'm also glad to see that the whole platform is full of gods, and I don't think there's any space for any extra god there. <laughs> but anyway, I would like to draw your attention to certain points related to the congregation, the commonality, and the unity of purpose that has brought you here. Hindu, H-I-N-D-U, Hindu. Who is a Hindu? Is that a religion? Is that a sect? Does it comprise of fundamentalist reactionaries, violent people, or what? Who is a Hindu? What is Hinduism? The answer is simple. Hinduism is not a religion. Hinduism is not a cult. Hinduism is a way of life. It's an attitude towards life. Therefore, it is no surprise that all of us meet and observe different festivals, celebrate occasions in harmony and unity. Hinduism <coughs> has always been compared with an ocean. All rivers merge into an ocean. When once rivers merge, into an ocean, the rivers lose their names, lose their taste, lose their form, become one with the ocean. Therefore, my friends, it's most appropriate that we have our functions here, Hindu Samaj. Yes, service Mandir, very good. Because all roads lead to Rome. All rivers merge into ocean. Therefore, not only these, many more would come and join us because the philosophy over centuries has been one of synth synthesis, not of antithesis. It is the one of unity in diversity. Hindu, H-I-N-D-U. What does it mean according to such Sai Baba? Having been with him for decades, I quote him, repeat his statements where I find utmost joy and commitment. H meant history. The history dates back to thousands of years. 
There is no other religion which is more ancient than Hindu faith. Thousands of years ago, the Veda, the first sacred text, <coughs> it is also said that other religions have sprung, originated out of this parental Hindu philosophy. To say Hindu, Muslim, Christian, these three have relationships of a grandfather, father, and a son. That's it. They are closely related, closely related. Then, who is a Hindu? Him, him means himsa, violence. Do meaning dura, who keeps himself dura, away from violence, is a Hindu. The one who believes in violence may call himself so, but the definition does not agree, not certify. Keeps himself from this violence, Hindu. I can also tell you, my friends, here, referring to so many idols over here, Baba's interpretation. Gods are many, but divinity is one and the same. There may be many bounds, but same current, same current. We cannot say this bulb has extra current, that's a less current. This current is from Joburg, and this current is from Cape Town. <laughs> same electricity supply, same. I'll give you Baba's interpretation on some of these aspects that you find there. Bhagavan holds Vivekananda in very high esteem. Vivekananda is a man of dignity. Vivekananda is one of discipline and commitment. He is one of courage. He stood for sacrifice. In fact, he is the paragon of Hindu philosophy, the cyclone of Hindu philosophy. And if Ramakrishna has become so great, if Ramakrishna's mission has been spread out throughout the world, it is because of Swami Vivekananda. But at the same time, Swami Vivekananda said, Why do you praise me? I am after all nobody. If, I must, if my master just casts a look, there will be thousands and thousands of Vivekanandas. That was the height of humility obedience, adoration, prayerfulness towards his master, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Therefore, those of us that see Vivekananda should pray that we should have that kind of commitment, that kind of leadership, that spirit of sacrifice and service. Yes, then, sir, what? No, sorry, it's on that place, Okay. <coughs> then we see there Rama, Lakshmana, Sita, Anjaneya. In this modern age, if we tell people God has a wife, and God also has children, and he too has got family problems, it looks ridiculous. Gone are the days when people simply heard what our elders said. Gone are the days out of fear that youngsters accepted whatever they said. Today they'll ask you why? Why should you marry? Why should you beget children? What's all this? What answer we give? To that, Baba gives an answer. Because I thought, see, watching these things, 
The best way of communicating Baba's message is speak, to speak on deities. What does he speak of Rama and Sita? Are they husband and wife? Are they married? What does the marriage signify? Rama, Rama represents positive. Sita represents negative wire. Positive wire and negative wire, both the wires together allow the electricity flow. Electricity won't flow through single wire, as we know. Two wires are required. So Rama and Sita represents these two wires, allowing the flow of electricity or current, the creation, sustenance. Rama himself represents Purusha, the master, the divine spirit in everybody. Sita represents Prakriti or the body. Prakriti means body. All of us have body. Anybody who say, I don't have body? If anybody says something questionable. Everyone has a body. This body is Sita. God inside is Rama. So Rama Sita represents the body and the spirit. The body and Atma are the self. That's Rama Sita. And then you have got Lakshmana there. Who is Lakshmana? Shall we take it that he is simply a brother who followed his elder brother for no fault of his, making his wife sleep until he returned? Oh, what, what is it? What does it convey? Lakshmana is the mind. Please follow me, sirs. These are all from Sai literature. These are the things that we should spread in the community. These are the things that we should tell our children. If you really want this life of religion to continue in the years to come, or else not. We cannot go by blind faith any longer. We should be able to give scientific, reasonable explanation, full of rationale and understanding. Who is Lakshmana? Lakshmana represents the human mind. Human mind should follow the master Rama within. Human mind should follow the conscience Rama within. Human mind should follow the Atma or the spirit Rama within. Therefore, my friends, body is Sita. Conscience Consciousness, spirit, is Rama. Mind is Lakshmana. How about Anjanaya there? <coughs> Anjanaya represents zeal, enthusiasm to fulfill the task of Ramachandra. He did not hesitate. He did not doubt. He never felt diffident. He was ready to fulfill the task of Ramachandra. Hanuman represents an ideal devotee. An ideal devotee with all the dynamism. An ideal devotee with all the enthusiasm, height of intelligence and intellect to meet any number of challenges along the way while fully fulfilling the task of God. Ramachandra. That is the picture over there. And then I also see another picture. Coronation of Rama there. Coronation. Sita, <laughs> Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Sitrana, and Anjaneya. Coronation. What does it mean? Coronation does not mean a day of celebration. Coronation does not mean empowerment. Carnation does not mean a day to be declared a holiday. <laughs> Carnation meant installing God, sit on the throne of our heart. Just as Rama is seated on the throne, 
let God be seated on the throne of our heart. With the mind on one side, the body cooperating on the other side, with all the enthusiasm below, that is coronation of Pattabhisheka. That's a wonderful picture indeed. Then we have Anjaneya idol there, carrying a mountain. Shall we carry a mountain? Is that possible? We can't lift even a gunny back. <coughs> Leave alone a mountain. Mountain meaning stupendous task, magnificent task, tough job. In undertaking that tough job, Anjaneya never felt strain, strenuousness, or tiresomeness at any point of time. Straight on the job. That's what it is. All of us should emulate his example. Then we have Durga Mahakali statue here. The Durga represents power, energy. All of us have energy as we walk, as we talk, as we move, as we do. Energy is required. When energy is not there, we can't move an inch. So Durga represents the power of the energy. Then we have Radha Krishna, Krishna Radha. Krishna, who is Krishna? Krishna is the one who makes us all happy. Krishna, name. Krishna also signifies who would pacify, silence all our trishna, our passions, our sensual desires. The one who pacifies your desires is Krishna. The one who delights you, who amuses you, is Krishna, Krishna Nama. Then, you are very good indeed because you have given a place to Shiva and Parvati. We are not purely Vaishnavites. You are not totally Shaivites. You give equal respect to all. Shiva, who is Shiva? Who is Parvati? Shiva represents the cosmic form. Because Shiva has no form for information. Shiva is worshipped in the form of lingam. Lingam. Shiva has no form. Shiva is a philosophy. Shiva is a doctrine, not an individual. And Shiva represents realization. Shiva represents atomic principle of a poor journey in our spiritual path. That's what. Parvati represents divine grace. The divine grace. Therefore, we earn the divine grace that way. And we have Shirdi Baba on one side. Shirdi Baba of this age. Who is Shirdi Baba? Oh. I may tell you, Shirdi Baba is not the one who confined to Shirdi in India. Certainly not. Shirdi Baba represents unity of religions, unity of faiths. Because in Shirdi, Muslim functions are observed. Hindu functions are observed. He looks like a fakir, a Muslim. And you find namaz, Muslim prayers every day. You also find Vishnu Sahasranama. Then chanting or recitation, Lord Vishnu's holy name. So Hindu mode of worship, Muslim world mode of worship happened family together in Shirdi times. An attempt made to bring all religions under one canopy. <coughs> then we come to Satya Sai Baba. 
Such a Sai Baba, my friends, is one in many. All I said now are in him. Rama, Krishna, Sita, Parvati, Shiva, everybody, all are in him. Not only that, Christ is in him. Allah is in him. All in one. We live in electronic age. Two in one, three in one. Baba is all in one. <laughs> then you may wonder, oh, what if? He may be all in one, what if I from? How does it help me? I'm so happy, though by number you may not be many, many who assemble here, but by the interest and inquisitiveness, I'm very happy that you are true seekers of God. You are true inquirers of God. That tempts, tempts me to go deep into the subject. Why such a Sai Baba is important today? When there are so many gods and so many, why extra God? Why? I tell you, my friends, we have been considering religion separate from our life. We consider religion a, a kind of part-time job. We limit it to a day, say Friday, a Sunday, a Saturday, a Thursday. But in Satsai Baba, who said that God cannot be limited to a day, that God is to be thought of, is to be meditated upon, is to be worshipped from womb to the tomb, from birth to death. He changed, he revolutionized the very spiritual concept. Our spiritual ideas are different. So, to think of him all the time, throughout our life, is what religion is about. Constant, integrated awareness. The idea that whatever that happens is for my own good. The spirit of surrender is what we call religiousness. Not chanting a Veda, not simply singing uh, hymns. Singing hymns may be melodious. Chanting Veda may speak the, your memory. But how about the spiritual heart? How about the spiritual transformation? The spiritual transformation meant devotion and surrender. Devotion and surrender. What is devotion? Devotion meant that we should be able to see God in everyone, in everyone, to macrocosm. Whole thing is the work of the divine. The trees, the mountains, the sea, the forests, the valleys, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, human society. We all belong to one family, organic unity. This kind of oneness is the spirit of religion. So long we have differences among us, so long we have this ego problem, we may need hundred more lives to be closer to God. The one with ego has no place in the kingdom of heaven or in the world. Ego has no place. So, what shall I do in this busy world? The world day starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. We start at our native places. At 6 o'clock, drive miles and miles, caught in the traffic jam and go to the office. You want me to think of God? All the trucks? What nonsense I'm speaking. Do I mean that you should lose your jobs? No. What do you mean by thinking of God. You just begin your work with a word of prayer. Lunch time, thank Him for the day's work. As you retire, go to bed, thank Him for whole afternoon and wonderful day. Finish. <coughs> the whole day is divinized. Whole day is spiritualized. There will be a glass of water 
but a spoon of sugar is enough to make it sweet. You don't need a glass of sugar again. Similarly, just a prayer as we begin the day, just a word of thanks in the midday, and gratitude for the wonderful day that's spiritualizing our human life. Nobody said like this. He also said the surest way, the nearest way, non-stop flights to God are there only by service airline. <laughs> service airline. No music, nothing. Service airline takes you straight. Because you should serve everybody. Hindu Samaj Seva Mandir. Seva. Seva meaning service. Are we serving? No. How to serve? We do not know. I met a gentleman who went on bragging his work. I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. I, did that. I lost my patience. But I do have some manners and etiquette. The best thing I did was to avoid him. <laughs> That's all. If you are really spiritual, you never say, I did, I did, I did. He made me do. He willed me do. He wanted me to get this done. He blessed me with this opportunity. I am really liberated with this. I am very thankful to him. That should be an attitude of a devotee, rather saying, ah, I did it. I did it. What you can do? You cannot eat properly even. <laughs> what is it we say? Therefore, service is a laboratory where principles of religion are put to test. Religion is confined to a text, a scripture. But the truth of the scripture has to be proved in the laboratory of service. When you serve, you feel the thrill of it. You get the excitement of it. It was Jesus Christ who said, I have come to serve and not to be served. We also know Jesus Christ, Last Supper, washing the feet of his devotees, disciples. See that, washing the feet. The spirit of service, height of service. Therefore, in service, we should never lag behind. I'm so happy to come to know that the whole of South Africa, across the country, is full of service activities. Top, top, I have ever met as on today. By ranking, I rank it number one in service activities. These people are doing wonderful job, wonderful job. God bless you, God bless you in the years to come. And in Baba, who said, the journey of our life, journey of our life, comes to a close when we go back to the source. What is the source? Divine. Where are you? In the divine. Where do you go back? Back to the divine. You are from the divine. You are in the divine. You'll be back to the divine. The realization of this fact is the purpose of spiritual life, a religious soldier. Swami talked in his message several other things. Several other things. But when we go through his biography, we will understand that Swami is the very personification of all the principles that he teaches, of all the teachings that he advocates, all those things that he wants us to observe. Swami's love is a fathomless depth. You know, mums. Mums here, close to throat, mums. They swell in that part. Very painful to talk. Oh, one cannot even eat proper, properly when mums develop. It's more among children, mums. 
One day, Baba's this part is swollen, complete. Swollen. Who dares to ask him why? Who dares to ask him why? Nobody. If he wants to stay there, you dare not. Unless you want to pack your luggage back. <laughs> so nobody dared to ask him. Swami gave his discourse and he said, You are all surprised to see Swelling on either side of my throat here, I am suffering from mom's problem. This is the problem of a child studying in primary school. That boy is not able to bear that excruciating pain. He is crying day and night. I have taken up his disease. I am suffering on his behalf. That is the love of such Sai Baba. Can you ever imagine that? Jesus died on the cross for humanity. Swami suffers for the benefit of humanity. Whatever he has, whatever he has. There was a time when Swami had a severe heart attack while he was in Vrindavan. And he did not give darshan for two to three days. People inquire, Swami, what is it? Why? And Swami says, there is one devotee from Nainital, a hilly station. Nainital, Darjeeling, Missouri, they are all hill stations. There is a Balankas guru. She has four children. She had a massive heart attack. She may collapse any moment. Then what will happen to our children if she dies all of a sudden? I have taken up that problem upon myself. <coughs> he has taken the heart trouble of his heart, of his devotee on himself. My friends, we cannot imagine it happening anywhere. It is only Swami who suffers for everybody, who takes it upon himself out of compassion, out of concern. Yes. There are many instances. I can tell you one. There is one Balakas guru from the center of Tirupati. You must have heard of Tirupati. Tirupati is the place of Lord Venkateshwara, where most of the people go there to offer their hair which they grow next month. <laughs> <laughs> they forget why the hair is offered. The hair is a matter of some decoration, some beauty to everybody. Hair. And we stand before the mirror and we adjust our hair out here. How it is. And the hair is black in color. The black color represents animal nature. When you offer hair, meaning you are offering your animal nature, not to replace with it a beautiful cat instead. <laughs> it's not like we have become after all fashionable. We are after fashion, not after passion. What is it I can do? Swami explains all these factors in minute detail. There is one Balakas Guru in Tirupati. I went there. Wow! She is on the top of Everest in devotion. Full of devotion. She has taken me to her puja room. Where there is Baba's picture. There is Baba's jula on one side for Swami to lie down. There is Veena on the other side. I said, what's all this, madam? I play every day on my instrument to make Baba go to see. What shall I say? Am I a fool or is she a fool? <laughs> or is this all a reality or a story? Well, I could not uh, take it. I watched all that. And she said, I offer food to Swami before I partake. 
every night I sing for him. Every morning I sing Suprabhata. Wake him up every morning. I thought better I leave that place because she would consider me an atheist from her point of view. Because I don't do any. I don't know any. And the lady tells me that she was to be operated upon in Tirupati. She was to be operated. And she told doctors, I will not get operated unless I see my Baba and get his permission. The doctor said, you are to be operated, why his permission? She said, no sir, you do not know. He is my God, I should go. She came straight to Puttaparthi. And Swami said, go ahead with your operation. I will be there in the theater, don't worry. All right, she came. And she was taking the stretcher to the theater. The operation started. That lady could see such a Sai Baba in the theater with all the doors bolted, with all the doctors on duty around, nurses too. Such a Sai Baba, not in another form, in his own form, saffron robes, until sutures are done. Finally, he waved his hand and vanished. Doctors thought, where is he, where is he? That bolt is still there, but he left. Bolt and doors don't prevent him, don't stop him when he wants to go. This is an experience of that lady watching Swami in the theater during surgery. This was noted by a doctor, Dr. Lakshman Rao, a witness to the whole thing. And the whole episode is printed on the title sheet of a leading newspaper, Indian Express, in those days. <coughs> I covered these stories. I spoke on these topics in front of Swami. <coughs> Let me tell you, my friends, it's not easy to speak in front of Swami. If one word is extra, you will be out. <laughs> if one word is less, you have to wait for next life. <laughs> you have to weigh your words, hold responsibility, validity, accountability, credibility, and then speak or remain silent if you can. This I narrated in front of Swami, and Swami was smiling, acknowledging that he appeared there. How do you say that? There is another place in Andhra, Vizag, they say, V-I-Z-A-G. A doctor went for Swami's darshan, and the doctor overstayed there. This happens in the case of every devotee. We want to return by 10th, it will be 20th next day. How ten days passed, we do not know. We do not know the date and the time and the day while you are in Prasantalayam. There is a mystery of the place. There is a glory of the place. There is the divinity of the place. This doctor overstayed there. And one day Swami comes there and tells him, Go home immediately. I have no sleep for the last three nights. Go back. This doctor is a devotee. He has no guts to say, why Swami? No. He simply packed up his luggage and went home. By the time he returned, what does he find? All doors are open. All clothes are spread hither and thither. The house is completely robbed. Robbers went into the house, ransacked the whole thing. What is to be done? Then he was searching for his dog, Alsatian. He found that the Alsatian dog mouth is fully stuffed with cotton and he was lying unconscious on one side. He was in search of watchman. Watchman was tied to a post 
with a rope. He could not speak. Then this doctor went, untied that watchman and said, what happened? Doctor said, better you come immediately whenever you go or relieve me from this duty. I cannot be your watchman any longer. I am sorry. He said, what happened to you? Am I not paying well? Robbers were trying to attack this house for the last three days. I was going round and round. And third day I was beaten up. The dog is like that here like this, sir. Then doctor could understand what Swami said. I have no sleep for the last three days. Meaning Swami himself was serving as the watchman there. Then the doctor thought that all his life earnings must have been stolen. That he must have lost all the money and the jewels. He went inside. There at the central hall, you find heaps of all his clothes. Because, because that fellow removed all the clothes from Almira. On one side he find jewelry box with all the jewels. What is that fellow took with him? Why has he robbed? Why has he attacked the watchman in the dark? What is that he carried from here? Then he asked the watchman what happened. He started telling, Sir, thieves robbed everything. They removed all the clothes from Elmira. They caught hold of the jewelry box also. They pack. When they are about to go, mark my statement, when they are about to go, they saw the picture of Swami hanging on the top of the door, main door. When they are about to go, they saw the picture, horrified, terrified. They dropped all the luggage there and ran away. That is such a Sai Baba. While thanking our good friend for his fine words of introduction, I should also refer to uh, an experience of Jum Sai, a great eminent educationist working in the education program of such an organization across the globe. This Jum Sai owns a factory in Bangkok. And uh, he comes to Prashantra quite often. During one of the visits, he returns and he finds the whole factory empty. Nobody there. Then he moves around and asks his personal assistant what's happening here. Sir, one man is taking care of the whole factory, nobody else. You overstayed there. What can we do? He said, who is that man? Who went around the factory? Who has taken care of the factory so much? Who is he? And the secretary takes him to the office table where is a picture of Sai Baba. This man is going around our factory all these days. What do you say of Sat Sai Baba? Sat Sai Baba has no barriers like distance, has no barriers, limitations like time and space. He takes any form, any form to save you. Any form. Why? All forms are his. Why? All names are his. He believes in the unity of all religions, that all religions should understand the underlying unity, unity, unity. Without that unity, it's no religion at all. Unity, universe, university, universality, all derived out of this root word, Uni, uni, one, one, one. 
Therefore, Satsai Baba teachings center around this unity of religions. <coughs> Secondly, service to the entire humanity. Thirdly, divinizing our lifestyle, spiritualizing our lifestyle by, <coughs> by dedicating all our activities to him. By observing total surrender, we can follow Sai path of devotion, Sai gospel of religion. And such a Sai also wants us to realize the divinity within. Divinity within. We always want to see God outside. Forgetting the fact that God is inside. Pure heart is the temple of God. Mandir. Mandir. Man means mind. Mandir. Mana mandirame avo sai. Please come to my mind, Baba. Hurvaya mandirame avo sai. You come and install yourself in my heart, Swami. So, all our endeavors, all our attempts should be Service, unity of religions. And Swami has set an example in his lifetime. The purpose of avatar is to demonstrate how a life is to be led. By serving everybody, he has shown what service is. We also serve, but we expect some praise. We expect some recognition. We expect some word of thanks at least. By the true service, spiritual service, does not expect any thanks, word of gratitude, no publicity, no propaganda, no recognition. It is silent. Why? Sun is giving us sunlight. We don't thank him. Ocean is so beautiful. <coughs> We don't thank. Moonlight is so fine. We don't thank. So, to express gratitude for every act of grace, for every situation, is a true prayer. In a nutshell, I shall mention you his famous oft-repeated quotes. He said. Start the day with love. Do we start the day with love? No. We start the day with the shouting. <laughs> shouting at the wife while she has not got the clothes ironed. We shout at children for keeping office keys somewhere. So we start the day with the shouting and fighting. But Baba says, Start the day with love. How do you start the day with love? By a by word of prayer. A word of prayer. A song of praise. Start the day with love. Spend the day with love. Throughout the day, spend the day with love. Do we do that? No. Because we shout at everybody that comes to our chamber. We are not satisfied with the work of our uh, subordinates. We are not happy with our servant maids. We want to shout. Shouting is a sign of ego. If anyone shouts, means ego. That is not a religion at all. Spend the day with our meaning. Silence. Silence. Giving and forgiving. Love is giving and forgiving. Give and forgive. When you give and forgive, transformation takes place. But when you get and forget, things become worse. We, we get and forget, therefore we don't improve the quality of our life. But we are supposed to give and forgive. That is a way how we should spend the life, day, with love. 
Start the day with love, with a prayer. Spend the day with love, giving and forgiving. Fill the day with love. How do you fill the day with love? Grabbing every service opportunity. How? Love all and serve all. Love all, serve all. Then you can fill the day with love. How can I serve all? I'm a salaried man. I'm an officer. How can I serve? My friend. If anyone comes to you and says, what is the time? I don't know. You should not bark like that. <laughs> if anyone comes to you and says, sir, would you please help me? It's not my duty, God. That's not the way. Therefore, service means every word should be so kind, full of concern. So Baba says, talk sweetly and softly. We don't talk sweetly. Unfortunately, some of the lives are denied of soft speech. They don't know how to talk softly. They only how to shout to the pitch of their voice. That even dogs will feel ashamed of them. <laughs> talk softly, sweetly. Even bitter things can be said sweetly. We don't have to shout. Therefore, fill the day with love by talking softly, sweetly. Spend the day with love by loving all, serving all, giving and forgiving everybody. Lastly, end the day with love. When the whole day begins with love, spent with love, filled with love, you end the day with love automatically. Since we do not spend the day with love, we don't get go to bed soon. Many people find it difficult to go to sleep. Somebody will say, ah, it will be night when I want to sleep. What were you doing all the time? You are thinking of your own colleagues. How to give him back? How to shout at him? How to insult him in public? How to see that you will get the business and that he will, other man will lose the business? The constant commandments, maneuvering, manipulation, revenge, anger will make us sleepless. Leave alone other man losing anything but we will lose our health, that is guaranteed. By losing sleep, by losing your temper, what happens? Blood pressure waits at the door. The moment blood pressure enters, through the window, sugar jumps in. Those two shake hands with each other and take you to the hypertension. <laughs> and this will go on and on, end up in cardiac arrest. The worst of the tragedies that could happen. Leave alone religion's life, dharmic way of life, ritualistic way of Leave alone, at least for your health. Start the day with love. Spend the day with love. Fill the day with love and end the day with love. When you love people, you begin to serve all. Love all. When you serve somebody, what happiness you have, one knows for himself. By feeding a poor man, when that beggar starts eating, you watch his face. The Holy Bible clearly said, that all these people go to hell. That all these people go to heaven. One time decision. Mass scale, and mass. Then somebody to go to hell asked Christ, O oh Lord, why do you condemn to hell? Why do you condemn me to hell? Why? 
the Lord says, You did not good give me food when I was hungry. You did not give me water when I was thirsty. You did not give me clothes when I was naked and shivering. You did not visit me when I was sick. Therefore, this is your correct place, hell. Then this man asked, When did you come, my Lord? Please tell me the date and the time when you came. When did I refuse to give you extra hospitality? The Lord says, Whosoever that comes to your house, let him be anybody asking for food, understand, it is I that come to you. If I ask for drink, understand, it is I that want water, because I am everybody. Therefore, this spirit of love, understanding that everyone is divine, that I feed God by serving food to poor people, that I am supplying water to poor people, the health care, Medicare. I was told many good things about South Africa. Dentistry, they said. 500 patients they check every week. I was very happy. <coughs> there in Durban, there are some doctors who have dedicated their lives. In Joburg, there are teachers that go to schools and teach them. There are people that feed the poor people every week. This is religion. Service is religion. Love is religion. Bliss is religion. Not merely observance of a ritual. <coughs> Therefore, my friends, I have many things to share with you. <coughs> How he takes upon himself the problems of others. How he loves everybody unconditionally. And the quintessence of message being service and unity of religions. Spiritually, to experience divinity within is the ultimate goal, the purpose of religion. I will be very, very happy to answer your questions because questions will let me know what you want to know from me. Whereas lecture is only emptying oneself and just emptying myself, it's not that. You may be wanting from me something serious. You may wanting from me something focused, something attentive, something which is more important, something taking us to spiritual heights of excellence. I would like to cater your requirements. I'd like to know what you want to know from me, my friends. I'm not a fellow who believes in one-way traffic. I'm not a fellow who believes in unidirectional flow of information. No, it's bidirectional. I have given you some hints or points for you to ponder over so that you can certainly reflect upon and put forward questions. Thank you very much for listening to me in a text. May Baba bless you. Thank you. How much of water do you need? Likewise, transformation. You will know. What was I before coming to Swami? What was I before I am exposed to any religion, any religion, any God? What was I? Full of anger full of temper, full of selfishness, full of pride, ego, self-centeredness. Slowly, slowly, unnoticeably, the remote operator there will bring transformation in you. A selfish man becoming selfless. A man who wants to grab the whole world. Now, 
detached. A man who is always disturbed, now calm, composed, and peaceful. You may not notice that change, your friends will notice. Are, what happened to you? Why is it that you are like that? All of a sudden. Then you give him a smile and send him. Because you know the reason that they are exposed to Baba. So transformation in one's own life is best known to every individual by the kind of life, the attitude towards life, and interrelationships in the community. Thank you. This seems to be a common one um, about all the negativity that's around us. It is focusing on higher consciousness and positivity. Love is the only way to transformation. How do we harness this with the negativity all around us? Good. As I said in the beginning, all illustrations, anecdotes are from Sai literature only. He gives an example here. When there's more of chili powder, more hot stuff, what do you do? You add some more chili powder? What do you do? You put salt in it. When you put salt, well, it will not be as hot as before. Similarly, when there is negativity, meet it with positivity. Not by negative thoughts. Negativity will never leave you by negative mind. Negativity can be nullified by positive thinking, by positive view. How is it? This glass is half full of water is one way of saying. The other way of saying is, this glass is half empty. Meaning, the negative fellow thinks of the emptiness. The positive fellow thinks of its fullness. Understand me? And a fellow may say, oh, a thorn is here, there is a rose flower. Thorn has a rose. The other fellow will say, Rose has a thorn. Rose has a thorn. Thorn has a rose. That makes a lot of difference. You think of the rose, and then thorn is negligible. When you think of the thorn, a rose becomes negligible. Similarly, promote positivity, positive thinking, hope, promise. Not frustration, not hopelessness, not depression, no despondency, nothing. Proceed, proceed positively. Thank you. <coughs> Next question is, we often told that there are only two emotions, love and fear. What is fear? Good. Now I'm feeling the quality. Now I'm feeling the quality of the devotee. <laughs> of Port Elizabeth. Wow. Good, good. In my younger days, my English professor used to tell me Elizabethan English. Elizabethan English. Standard English. So, you are worthy of the name, Port Elizabeth, by putting forward intellectual questions. Love and fear. The answer is straight, my friend. Where there's fear, there's no love. Where there's love, there's no fear. Love knows no fear. Fearlessness is love. Lovelessness is fear. Then again, why fear? We fear because of some mistake. We fear because of guilty consciousness. We fear because we have no confidence. We fear we have no faith in God. Then once we are established in full faith that he will take care of us, why fear when I am here? Why fear when I am here? So fear comes due to lack of faith, diffidence, and because of a mistake. Where there's love, there's no fear at all. Because when there's love, you don't commit a mistake. 
that there's no question of fear at all. Thank you. I think we have uh, time for a few more questions. Uh, this one says, please reconcile money and spirituality. Ah, good, good, good. No one can underestimate you, my friends. You are not ordinary people, good. Ah, you are quite challenging devotees. Money and spirituality. To pass through the eye of a needle, but not for a rich man to enter in the gates of heaven. That's what Bible says. Well, that apart, what does Baba say? Money and spirituality. Money, if you take only money, 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 it is materialistic. If you make money for good purpose, for service activity, not for vices, not to be spent on casino, not for drinks. If money is spent for your life, for the family benefit, in service to the community, money has not done anything wrong to you. Because misuse of money is evil. Money in Hindu philosophy is called God, Lakshmi. Lakshmi is God. God of wealth. So, do you misuse God? No. Do you neglect God? No. So, Baba says, money comes and goes. Morality comes and grows. Morality comes and grows. And for the middle class people, Swami has one word to say. But unfortunately, I have not met middle class people in South Africa. <laughs> I met only Pash and those below the poverty line. No middle class people. It only means I have no place here in this country. I am just a middle class man. <coughs> Swami said this. He compared many money to our footwear, the shoe. The shoe should be exact to your measurement, to your size. If the shoe is too loose, you will fall, fall. If the shoe is too tight, you cannot walk. So, shoe should be in accordance to your size. Money should be in accordance to our requirements. For our needs, not for desires. Need and a desire are different. We cannot live without fulfillment of desire. Water is not a desire. What is my need? To have Mercedes Benz, it is a desire. So I can live even without a desire, and I cannot live without a need. So needs we can have, not the desire. Because desire takes us to any limitless direction that we lose our sense of proportion ultimately. That's Baba's views on money and spirituality. Thank you. <coughs> it says water, man cannot live without it. And this the divine grace of Swami can bring water to all. I find it surprising that the Indian government had to seek Swami's help to do this. Instead, I put it this way. Indian government has not sought Swami's help for drinking water supply. No. Swami himself volunteered. Swami himself made a promise that he will supply water. That he will undertake that water project all by himself. It's not that government has uh, sought his help. It is he who has volunteered. Because the one who does without asking is God. The one who does not do, even we ask, is man. Even in spite of our asking, he won't do. Without asking if he does, is divine. So Baba responded 
the needs of the people directly and government has no role here. Just uh, as happened. At that time a minister came to visit President Ramayam. Swami announced drinking water supply project. That minister came with his convoy. Look here. When everybody are there, Swami successfully, nicely, delicately, tenderly, excellently, continuously avoided him. Avoided him. <laughs> he started moving among devotees, talking to children. So he didn't talk to him. That man left ultimately after Bhajan. Then I am always curious to know these things. He said, why do you look like that? Swami, so minister came with so many people. You are not looking at him, why? That fellow thought that I will give him money for the water project. <laughs> <laughs> I am not that fellow to give money, no. It is the, my water project. I have my team of engineers. I have my team of volunteers. I send them and fund and do it. I don't give money simply like that. Swami Baba said, am I clear, sir? Thank you. <coughs> Professor, would you be able to enlighten us about the third incarnation, the third avatar in the trilogy? If you don't mistake me, if you don't mistake me, I don't want you to entertain that idea at all. Why are you bothered about third incarnation? Have you done everything necessary for the first incarnation? Are you complete in your jobs, attending, following the teachings of the second incarnation? Why third incarnation? And in fact, I saw it in one place, they kept the big idols of third incarnation also. Why should I talk to them? I simply kept quiet. But what Baba said, I will tell you. One over enthusiast said on the dais, Swami, I want to be born again to serve you when you come back as Premasai. He thought that he is praising Baba. He thought that the blessed platform to exhibit his devotion. Then Baba spoke, I translated. What did he say? It is enough if you serve this incarnation, that is enough. You don't have to wait for third incarnation. What is the present incarnation? It is a continuation of the past incarnation. What is the future avatar? It is a continuation of the present. So, the present is a result for the past. Present is a foundation for the future. So, it is not the simple present, it is omnipresent. And when third incarnation comes, where is the guarantee you recognize him? Where is the guarantee that you live that long? Where is the guarantee that we bring you close to him? Don't bother, forget about it. Follow the teachings of this incarnation. That satisfies the past, present and future. Thank you. Please. We're talking about the person who said that I've done this and uh, the ego is overtaken his whatever he's done. Mm -hmm. Those people we call them eye specialists. You call them eye specialists? What? <laughs> I call them skin allergy also by <laughs> Good good thing. <laughs> So, shall we conclude? Yes? Um, come on, boy. No, I have more here. <laughs> jaya ho, jaya ho, go palana, jaya ho, jaya ho, go palana, jaya ho, jaya ho, go palana, jaya ho, 